we're we're running out of time here, but I I don't know if you want to extend just a few minutes. Can we do that? Can we extend five minutes or something like that? Take a couple more questions, and then I'd like everybody to tell the audience here uh, when there are some showings of your film yet left in the festival. And point out, which and I had to run out. I'm sorry, but that George is the star. Was that made clear? That you didn't make the documentary, but it, it I'm in it. I'm in uh, These Amazing Shadows, which is a documentary about, uh, ostensibly about the National Film Registry, which is run by the, not a library, the Library of Congress. Uh, but it, become, it became much more a film about the love of film and the love and the work of film preservation. And it's tonight at 4.30 and tomorrow at 7.10, I believe. Kaleo Witchers. Beyond This Place is screening tonight at 5.45, I believe. Um, it's the second screening, so tonight's the last night to see it. Um, we have two screenings left, I Do Letterman, tonight at 9.10 and tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. for you early risers. <laughs> so, uh, hope to see you there. We'll be there. Yeah. Welcome to Shelbyville is tonight at 6 and again tomorrow at 11.30, followed by a uh, film forum panel. And then it's going to be on. Oh, and then it's going to air on uh, Independent Lens, which is on PBS on May 24th. Thank you. An edited version. Um, the, my screenings have passed, but you can. we got lucky and HBO picked the film up, so it's going to be on June 13th on HBO. What was the date? June 13th. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Not nine years worth. Did you no. get your money back? Um, we, we eventually we will. <laughs> That's how we all foreign sales, right? <laughs> foreign sales. Um, if you agree, we'll take a couple more questions sure. before we wrap this up. Uh, cool. Yeah. Hi, I had two quick questions. Uh, the first is, when do you, um, I guess, solicit, solicit the services of entertainment lawyers or agents? At what point in the documentary process do you do that? And then my second question is. Um, for someone looking to invest in equipment and software, what are some uh, basic requirements that they should find a couple? Yeah. Just like one word answers? Yeah. Final Cut If you're going to have, if you're going to build yourself out, I will say I love Final Cut. I'm a Final Cut guy. Look at Premiere too. It's come a long way. And I'll tell you that Adobe Creative Suite with After Effects and Premiere and Encoder, it's doing some magic. And if I, if this will be a new version of Final Cut Pro coming out June 30th. But if it's not great, you can do yourself a disservice not to also check out Premiere if you're going to be a one person shop. But we have like 30 licenses of Final Cut because that's what we use on our shows. So we're not going to be moving to it. I just think one, people should, one person shop will do a disservice if you don't check out the creative suite. I think as we said earlier about sound, definitely um, invest in a good wireless mic, um, depending on how many people you're going to be shooting, you know, have a two. decent boom, yeah, have two, <laughs> and have a, you know, a shotgun mic on your camera. Um, Camera-wise? Uh, Camera-wise, whatever. I, I think what you're comfortable with. with. Yeah, I listen, a lot of people are shooting on the DSLRs. I'm not a huge fan of them for run and gun. You know, I mean, the, the depth audio of, yeah, has to be completely yeah. separate. Well, in a lot of cases, the audio has to be separate. The, the, the depth of field is really shallow. We just invested in the, the EX1R. We had a couple EX1Rs. I like them a lot because mm -hmm. it's a it's a half-inch chip. It's a shallower depth of field, but it's not so shallow that you can't follow action on the fly. It blows up really nice. Um, it's a more expensive camera. We have also have you know flip cam footage that's in Dying to Do Letterman. It looks really good on the big screen, so I think it's, it's how you... Cam uh, cameras are what it. you're comfortable with. You know, if you're going to be shooting or if you're going to have a DP shoot, you know, it's a very kind of user-based thing. And the lawyer thing, I would say that um, I, there are more stories than I can think of about really bad endings with beginning partnerships. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really important in the, in the very beginning if you're going to collaborate and partner up with people to clarify um, what yes. that partnership is. A lot of people think it comes way down the line with all the things you think of like releases and you know having someone check out. But it's really, I, I just see so many you know, sad endings with, um, with business partnerships. You know, someone's got access to the story and someone's brought in and you're like all excited about it and like, oh, I'll pay for your ticket to go. And you don't work out like what you know, 
Okay. You yeah, end up doing like, all the work and <laughs> yeah, and whatever. Yeah. I, I would say right at the beginning, you really get yourself covered. Get a nice little production packet in terms of location releases and personal releases. And you know, if you if you're partnering up with someone in terms of really formalizing what is that business relationship. And then I would say at the end, when you have your final cut, just have a lawyer look at it and make sure that there's nothing in there that you're not covered with. Cool. Yeah, yeah. The main thing is like if you if you're lucky yeah. enough to sell it at the end of HBO, you've got to. You gotta have releases. You gotta have that stuff covered. So if you're on, if you're on the street and you're doing Vox, but you know it, it, it's 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 never good not to have it written. But at least always, on camera. always yeah, on camera, release. get someone to say you have permission to use it. And and there are a lot of lawyers too that will, you know, you're interviewing them. They're working for you. Yeah. But don't forget that. Like talk to, ask people. Who, do you have an entertainment lawyer? Call them up. Say I'm a first time filmmaker. Will you work for less? And and reputation. Talk to a lot of people. Was there a good person to work with? And just ask everybody, and you'll find a good fit for you. And then get those releases. So because it, right now for me too, you know, I've got to submit all my releases to HBO. They want to look over everything, and they if they weren't formatted correctly, then they're not really worth very much. So you have to be aware of that, right? The get Music go. too. Music licensing. Yeah, that's what I would. Very important. That's what I wanted to add. Music. <laughs> music, yeah, yes. Music you could really edit with expensive. the most fantastic music that, and, uh, and even if you think you got it, for example, you have a friend, or you make a recording of somebody singing a song. Just because you recorded somebody singing a song doesn't mean they have the rights to the music of the film. So you have to know who, who's, who's the writer and um, find out there because if it's whoever, you, you might never get it. So. And on the flip side, really, really uh, get an understanding of what fair use means, because there may be stuff that you really can use for free yeah. that you did, didn't think you could, and depending on the context you use it in. So, and so if you've got a good lawyer, they can explain it to you. Yeah. Too. I think we have time for one more question. Yeah. Yeah. You know, making documentaries takes so much time. It's such a passionate thing. I just wonder how you guys would feel if, if somebody came up to you and say, uh, "I've got fifty thousand dollars. This is my topic." and I got a year to film it. Uh, how would you feel about working in such a mercenary way? Would that appeal to you? Um, it's not your idea. Do you have 150,000? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just did something like that. So. Yeah. I mean, I, you listen, we work in television, so that's what we do all the time with Perfect. networks. It's, you know, it's very much a collaborative effort. I think that you know, if you really have $150,000 in a subject to follow, you need to find a filmmaker that gets your gets that story and is as passionate about that for that you are creatively in line with that person um, with the filmmaker because if you just pick any willy-nilly filmmaker and you guys end up going on completely different stories then there's then that's the bad ending to the partnership you know so I think it's about finding people that that you know but also would you sign up for a project though that you weren't originally passionate about I mean you don't know where a documentary is going to go really a lot of the time I want to make sure you got your money's worth, you know? I mean, if it was something, listen, if it was something that I knew never in a million years I could get invested in, I'd feel like I was screwing you over if I took your money and then went and, and did that. I mean, we're, we're the same way with our shows. We won't, you know, we've turned down shows because it's just like, I, I'm i not going to be able to, to live with that 24 hours a day for a year or two years or whatever, you and, know? And I'm a, a big believer kind of like cooking where it's like, um, Give me some ingredients, and there's always a you know a good way, an interesting way, to tell that story. Um, but also, I would want the person to know that you know, in the end, filmmaking really can't be made by committee. You know, at the end, you're in an edit room, and it's you and your editor, and you can't you know you can't have someone who doesn't know filmmaking at all say you know why can't you stick that scene back in or why can't you put yeah. you know at a certain point you've got the, the person has to trust that the reason they're giving you the money is because you're a professional uh, doing this. And Kim, you make an awesome point, and this, this is true. It's part of the reason why you make independent documentaries and part of the reason why you do your own films is because if the minute you take money from somebody, especially a network, it becomes, at the end of the day, a lot of times filmmaking by committee, and you fight and you fight and you fight like hell, but sometimes you're not going to get past what a sponsor wants or what a network needs. And so for us, working on this movie for the past six years has really been a creative release because at the end of the day, we're just making the movie we want. You know, and I think that's what's so great about you know somehow finding funding and, and, and with people who understand, yes, I'm going to go make my movie. 
Um, and you don't really get that luxury so much in, in, t in TV or, or even taking money from a studio. So in short, it's in a way, it's less about the issue, unless I think it's a like horrible story, and more about Final Cut. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also about the motivation, though, as well. That the motivation of the person giving the money and the motivation of the director or author is in sync. Because right. if those two motivations are different, then it's just going to be problematic. Yeah, if it's a propaganda film, I mean, I probably, I, I doubt that I would take out a propaganda film, you know? It's like, okay, it's not, yeah, the motivation 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And is, is someone taking it as a day job, like, okay, great, you know, and just going to go through the motions, and that's not the right match for you either. You need to find someone, again, that has that motivation, that has that same passion for it. Because we, as documentarians, have to live with it 24-7, and it really is all-consuming. So if we're not passionate about it, then... Or want to put your name on something that you Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Plus, if you're not careful, you know, a slick filmmaker can live a long time off $150,000. So, <laughs> a year. <laughs> year. We'll be making this for 10 years. <laughs> uh, well, I want to thank our panelists uh, for being here. Sally, Kieran, And I want to thank you all for coming and encourage you. There's another panel starting up in less than a half hour now. So uh, stick around. You want to have a little more fun, okay? Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.